Hello traders, this is Hugh Kimura. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a MetaTrader VPS using Amazon Web Services. Now, what does this all mean? In a previous blog post, I showed you how to take a cheap netbook that you get off of eBay and turn that into a MetaTrader server. So that could execute trades for you or it could send out trading signals based on indicators. And that's a great way to get started because it's very low cost. You're using a cheap laptop that you got off of eBay and you're using your home internet connection that you would have anyway. But the primary problem with this setup is that your power could go out and you would lose your internet connection. So if you're in the middle of a trade, it might not close out properly and you might lose money. Or the best case scenario is that you just don't get your signals via your indicator. So if you want to step up the reliability, you have to go with a VPS or a virtual private server. And these are online services that give you basically a laptop in the cloud. So you can set up MetaTrader on there and you can run your EAs and your indicators. Uh, there's a lot of different services. I've, I haven't tried them all, but I really like Amazon services. So I'm going to show you how to use Amazon EC2 to do this. The best part is that you can do it for free for the first year. After that, it's going to cost maybe 12 to $15 a month, but that's pretty affordable compared to other stuff out there. And you get the Amazon reliability, which is great. So let's jump into how to set this up. First of all, you want to go to the Amazon web services website, sign up for a free account. They'll provide some services for free for the first year. You can get stuff like S3, which is basically file storage. And then you can also use EC2 for your MetaTrader setup. So let's go through how to do that. So I'm currently logged in. You want to start by choosing the location that's closest to you in the upper right corner. So in my case, it's going to be Northern California. And you want to do this because you want the server that's closest to you most of the time. So that means you'll get a faster response time. And I have an instance already running, so I'm not going to go through the entire process again, but I'll show you how to do it. And it's pretty easy. First, you want to start by clicking the launch instance button, and that'll take you to a screen to choose the type of computer that you want to use. There are several different flavors of Linux here. You can use Ubuntu, like I showed you how to do before, or you can use Windows Server. I found that although I like Ubuntu better, Windows Server is actually a easier setup and it's easier to connect to. So I'm using that instead. Although I really hate Windows, but uh, this is one instance where I use it. So I'm going to go ahead and use Server 2012 R2 Base. Select that. And then you want to select the free tier eligible instance. And then just keep clicking on next. You can take the default settings as you go. Uh, it's no big deal. Uh, these are the steps that are in there. And then once you're done, that will launch your instance. And if you want to look at my instances, I just have this one running Microsoft Windows. And you can see under the state, it's running and it passes checks. Uh, it, I, it does these two system checks in the beginning and it takes a little while to set up, maybe about half an hour. Um, so if you see it checking, then you just have to leave it for a little while. And then once you, ha once you see this green check mark, then it's good to go. And then just right click on this and click on connect. And the first thing you wanna do is download the remote desktop file. This will give you a, I think it's a PRM file. And that's just a security key that you use to get your password. Once you download that, you can click on get password. And then you can upload that file and then it'll show your password here. Now the next part is kind of tricky because when you download the remote desktop file, it'll also give you the um, remote desktop protocol file that you would use on Windows. But the download from Microsoft on their website doesn't work for Macs. Uh, it used to work, but I don't know, it doesn't work anymore, which isn't too surprising. But uh, if you go to the Mac App Store and you download the remote desktop client from there, that one does work. It's a red icon instead of the colorful icon that you get from Microsoft. And that will allow you to put in the information you see here and you can connect pretty easily. So I'm just going to close this out and I'm going to show you how that looks. So when I click on start, well, I have to first select it and then click on start. And then it'll give you this verify certificate thing. You don't have to worry about that. You can just connect. And then this is my instance of MetaTrader running right now. So that's all there is to it. And one thing I did with this install was I used Dropbox to synchronize the, the MetaTrader install. Because I was using this on the laptop before, um, if I moved over to 
Amazon Web Services, I may have had to redo all the settings and set up all the charts again if I did it the, the regular way. But I used Dropbox, so all I did was install Dropbox in here. And then once the file synced, then I just double clicked on the terminal and it brought back all of my settings, so that's great. So if you're trying out different things and you're gonna be moving around between computers, I recommend using Dropbox. It's free for the first two gigabytes and you probably won't need much more than that to install MetaTrader. So that's about it. That's how it works. It's pretty simple to set up. And now you have a reliable MetaTrader install that can send you signals or execute your EA trades. I hope that helped. And for more tips, visit tradingheroes.com. Thanks for watching.